Hey everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Priya and I'm a final year medical student in Newcastle University Medicine Malaysia. Currently, I'm placed in the a and &E rotation, so I have decided to summarize the A to E assessment that we do in primary survey when patient comes to emergency department acutely ill. This approach is such a systematic way to assess any acutely deteriorating patient. It includes airway, breathing, circulation, disability and exposure. Each of the stages in the ABCDE involves clinical assessment, investigations and interventions. It's very common to have simulation that involves A to E assessment in your medical school finals and that's the reason I've decided to make this video and make things simpler to understand. Hope you enjoy. Some general tips to remember during your simulation practice. First, always reassess after any intervention. Second, ask if the patient is in any pain during your management. Third, make use of the team around you by delegating tasks where appropriate and call for senior help using the proper structure when the patient is not responding despite the basic management. Clearly communicate what you want to do and document every single thing that you have done in the notes after managing your patient. Do you know what medication to prescribe? Make use of the hospital local protocol and algorithm. First, once you have arrived in the station, introduce yourself and listen carefully to the handover. Ask how the patient is feeling as this will provide you some useful information about their current symptoms. If the patient is unconscious or unresponsive, you need to start the basic life support algorithm as per resuscitation guideline. Alright, now let's get on with airway. The first in the list is airway plus C-spine restriction. Your first question in mind here should be, can the patient talk? Start by asking, hello Mr. or Miss, how are you, are you alright? If the patient responds to you normally, it gives you three clues right there. He has a patent airway, he is breathing and he has brain perfusion. What if the patient struggles to talk? Then you need to look for signs of airway compromise such as cyanosis, use of accessory muscles, paradoxical chest and abdominal movements. Open the mouth and inspect for any objects obstructing the airway. Now, let's discuss some of the interventions that you can do in airway obstruction. First, we have the airway opening maneuver, head tilt chin lift, by placing one hand on the patient's forehead and the other hand under the chin. Tilting the forehead back while lifting the chin forward will extend the neck and help you to inspect the airway clearly. But you can't perform this maneuver when the patient has suspected cervical spine injury because the maneuver is going to worsen the patient's symptoms by damaging the cervical spine even more. If that's the case, you can try jaw thrust by identifying the angle of mandible and by placing your index finger and other fingers behind the angle of mandible and steadily push the posterior aspect of the lower jaw. So when the mandible is displaced forward, it pulls the tongue forward and prevents it from obstructing the airway. We can also use the airway adjuncts in conjunction with the maneuver to maintain patient's airway. We have the oropharyngeal airway which used in unconscious patient to prevent the tongue from falling back. We also have the nasopharyngeal airway which used in semi-conscious patient and for patients who need frequent nasal suctioning. But if the patient loses consciousness and there is no sign of life, such as no pulse and the patient is not breathing, then you need to call for help and call the crash call team and start immediate CPR to initiate return of spontaneous circulation. Once you have checked the airway, now move on to breathing. Breathing is basically starting from the patient's vital signs, the trachea, skin changes and lung sounds. That means first you start with patient's respiratory rate and uh, check the oxygen saturation and have a quick inspection from end of the bed. Is there any central or peripheral cyanosis? Is the patient in respiratory distress or having a significant stride on? Look for their breathing technique. Is it labored? or is it rapid followed by little pause next gently assess the patient's trachea which should be central if it's deviated away you may want to think of a tension pneumothorax or large pleural effusion make sure you let know the patient that you are palpating the trachea because it can be a little uncomfortable 
then move on to chest expansion and auscultate to hear for any crackles, wheeze or reduced breath sound. While you are doing this A to E assessment, you will have a nurse or assistant nearby you. So this is where you get to show your examiner that you are involving multidisciplinary team in your management. So you can take this opportunity to request any investigation such as ABG or chest x-ray from the nurse. Once you have completed your assessment, do not forget to do your interventions. Administer oxygen. This involves a non-rebreather mask with flow rate of 15 liter except in cases like COPD. Then probably you want to go for a venturi mask. After an intervention, make sure to reassess the patient. If at any point the patient deteriorates, go back up the ladder and start from the beginning, which is your A, airway. Next, circulation. Here you are checking whether the tissues and organs are well perfused. So start from inspecting the patient again for pallor, edema, review their heart rate, blood pressure and calculate their capillary refill time, which should be less than 2 seconds. Place your dorsal aspect of your hand to check for the patient's temperature and check the patient pulses in terms of rate, rhythm, volume and character. Inspect for any raised JVP and auscultate the patient's precordium for heart sounds and for any added murmurs. Fluid overload can also present peripherally, so do not forget to check the patient's ankles and sacrum for edema. Now, intervention. Hypovolemic patients need resuscitation fluid to increase their cardiac output and improve their organ perfusion. The preferred solution normally given will be 500ml bolus Hartman solution or 0.9% sodium chloride over 15 minutes. But if the patient is at high risk of fluid overload, then probably you can reduce the volume to 250ml. Remember, after each intervention, reassess. So once you have given the fluid, monitor the therapeutic effect of the fluid, which is by auscultating the lung again, assessing the JVP and check their blood pressure. You can repeat fluid administration up to four times and reassess each and every time. If the patient is still not responding well, then probably you need to call for senior help. For disability, you want to assess the patient's level of consciousness using the ABPU scale or GCS. Check the patient's pupil by looking at the size and symmetry whether they have intact, direct and consensual pupillary response. At the same time, review the patient's drug chart for medications which may have caused any neurological abnormalities. Another fundamental thing that needs to be done in this category is glucose. Don't ever forget glucose. Measure the capillary blood glucose. If the level is raised, you may want to check the ketone level, suspecting for diabetic ketoacidosis. If you suspect the patient is very drowsy and not responding to your verbal cues, then probably you can request a CT head to exclude any intracranial pathology after discussing with your senior. Last but not least, exposure. It is important to expose your patient during your assessment while prioritizing their dignity. Ask if they have any pain in their body and inspect for any evidence of rash, bruising, signs of infection or open wounds. If the patient already had an IV line or urinary catheter, do not forget to check them for surrounding erythema and discharge. Now, once you have stabilized the patient and the patient is doing well, this is the time for you to do your history taking. Review the patient's note and narrow down your differential diagnosis. Then document your ABCDE assessment including history, physical exam findings, the observations, the interventions done and the patient's current clinical condition. Next, discuss the patient's clinical condition with a senior doctor using a systematic style. How? We will go through that in the next video. Click on the subscribe button if you haven't yet and if you have benefited from the video, like and comment. Stay safe and see you in the next one. Adios! Thank you.